happened from six months ago when the market was skewed towards sellers. Regardless of when the market does bottom out, Mr. Lawless anticipates a V-shaped correction. House price correction could be over by early 2023. CoreLogic National Research Director Tim Lawless has tipped the housing market correction to bottom out at the first quarter of 2023, followed by a swift recovery after the rate of house price decline eased in September this year. The sooner than expected turnaround won't be quick enough to stop Melbourne housing market from reversing all the gains it made during the pandemic. CoreLogic has reported a further fall in housing values through the first month of spring with the housing value index down by 1.4% in September. Although this trend has continued to go lower, the rated decline has eased from last month, which is 1.6%. And we can see on the screen, Sydney's monthly rated decline has eased. It's actually gone down. August's rated decline was 2.3%. It's come in in September 1.8%, totaling a 9% fall from its peak in January. Whilst we see Melbourne, the price is starting to taper as well. It's gone from 1.2% down to 1.1%. Brisbane, similarly, from one8 to 1.7%. So we can see across the country, the rate of decline is starting to slow down. Now with Melbourne dwelling values, which rose comparatively modestly by 17.3% during the pandemic, it only needs to fall a further 4.3% to return to early 2020 levels, pre-pandemic levels. And this scenario is highly likely according to Tim Lawless, the research director at CoreLogic. He mentioned the loss of momentum in the pace of value decline was evident across capital cities and housing falls accelerated in Adelaide and Perth this month. Both cities continue to record only mild reduction in values in comparison to other capital cities, only down 0.2% and 0.4% respectively in September. Tim Lawless said it's probably too early to suggest the housing market has moved through the worst of the downturn. And he said it's possible that we've seen an initial shock due to the rapid rate rises that had initially been passed through the market. And most borrowers and prospective home buyers are now pricing the rate hikes and further increases in their buying decision. However, if interest rates continue to rise rapidly, as we've seen since May, we could see further rate of decline in the housing market and further acceleration in those reductions. Now, looking at the housing market more broadly, Mr. Lawless went on to say that there's indicators that are subtle, such as rising auction clearance rates, improving sentiment across consumers, and lower listings environment in spring correlate to the possibility that the correction may be easing. He said that this trend is not going to be confirmed for a number of months and warned that the rate of decline could accelerate if interest rates continue to rise rapidly. If you're new to the channel here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things property and finance. Mr. Lawless went on to say there's still a lot of uncertainty in the market. However, the initial shock factor of rates going up in May has started to wash through. Every buyer or seller has it in the back of their mind that rates will go up but buyer's conditions are pretty good for now. It's quite the turnaround from six months ago when the market was skewed towards sellers. Regardless of when the market does bottom out, Mr. Lawless anticipates a V-shaped correction. So what exactly is a V-shaped recovery? As we can see here with a V-shaped recovery, it follows an initial crash, followed by a strong recovery in the economy with conditions after the decline observed as a V-shape. So what are the most likely reasons for a V-shaped recovery? Well, we had Lewis Strange on the show last month and we want to recap some of the things that he said. Well, when it comes to property price movement, even recently the weather has been a massive influencing factor where in Queensland, we had major floods that knocked a lot of properties out. It also stopped the amount of new constructions going on because there was constant rain slowing down that factor. So there's millions of different things that can influence property. But above all, one that in the short term can create either an upwards pressure on property price movements or downwards pressure is actually credit growth. And that's what everyone's talking about at the moment because you've got the RBA increasing interest rates. And that's slowing down how much people are actually borrowing. And historically, when, it, when you look at Australian property prices, the major factor in the short term has actually come down to credit growth, because out of all the other factors, things like population growth or wage growth, and even on the supply side, these do all have natural caps on how they grow, because 
wage growth. It's not like all of a sudden, one quarter, it goes up by 20% and another quarter can go down 20%. Same with population growth. But wage growth overall has been pretty consistent over the past 20, 30 years. However, property prices haven't. You've seen boom bust periods. And a lot of that has been correlated to not only interest rates being controlled by the RBA, but from APRA as well, which is the entity that controls banks' lending regulation. So taking that all into account, for us to see a V-shaped recovery, as Mr. Lawless is predicting, we might actually see some changes in lenders' criteria and easing of credit. Now, what are the things that we might expect to see? Well, firstly, we can see the cash rate has increased six times in the last six months. What this is actually meant for borrowers is for every 1% increase in the cash rate, we've seen borrowing power reduced by about 10%. So with over a 2.5% increase on the cash rate since May this year, borrowers have lost 25% of their capacity. Now, pending what actually happens, we can see CBA, Westpac, NAB, and ANZ all have predictions on where they see the cash rate peaking. If we take the most conservative, which is CBA's opinion, saying that the cash rate will peak next month in November at 2.85%, followed by two rate cuts in August and November, we could potentially see that V-shaped recovery coming to light, whereby the two rate cuts would actually increase borrowers' ability to borrow by about 5%, which would have a positive impact on property value. Other factors to keep in mind are things like interstate migration and even international migration. We've seen particularly with Queensland having record numbers of interstate migration. We can see that the government's also looking to get more international arrivals. So as that comes through, this might actually have an effect on that V-shaped recovery. Another factor that we might see is regulatory changes to credit, making it easy for borrowers to borrow, especially as the unaffordability piece is still one thing that's a big deal in the marketplace. We might see regulatory changes like we've seen in the UK, where a lender has been granted a special license to offer 50-year loan terms to mortgage holders. That's a 20-year increase from their 30-year base term. In Australia, we currently have maximum loan terms of 30 years. However, a longer loan term would mean increased borrowing power, which would also speed up the recovery. Tim Lawless even said himself, I always thought there was going to be a short and sharp correction as there was a very short and sharp upswing driven by interest rates. He also goes on to say that the view from economists is that interest rates will top out early next year and house prices will stabilize once interest rates stabilize too, which implies the first quarter of next year. Low listings remain a feature in capital city housing markets more broadly with listings down 12% over the first four weeks of September compared to a year ago. This is a sign that prospective vendors are prepared to wait for the housing downturn rather than trying to sell under more challenging conditions. It's definitely interesting times ahead and it might be one of those things that hindsight is 2020 when we look back on this all. Tim Lawless might be right, we see a V-shaped recovery could these things drag out? Leave a comment below. We'd love to know your thoughts. Did you know here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers. We're based in Australia and we deal with people Australia-wide. So if you're looking for a great mortgage broker, we can help. Did you know there's no cost for our service? We can help with refinancing, buying your first home, upgrading, downgrading, or doing anything else. Simply hit us up at huntergalloway.com.au or call us on 1300 08065 and we'll see you next time.